After 20 years and at least three trailers in the last month alone, Final Fantasy VII Remake is actually here in a playable form at E3 2019. Naturally, we had to go play it immediately. Now, some of us have waited most of our lives for this remake, and fortunately, the 50-minute demo I played answers a lot of my concerns and questions regarding the battle system, the game dynamics, and exactly how this is all going to work on the PlayStation 4. And by the end of the demo, all that talk of dual active time battle gauges, abilities, staggering and switch characters, all kind of made sense and gelled together. In short, the game was much easier to play than I feared it was going to be. Final Fantasy VII Remake tries to straddle the immediate battle dynamics of Kingdom Hearts or Final Fantasy XV with the slower paced, menu led, active time battle system of earlier Final Fantasy games. Now, I was a little confused by Square Enix's initial explanation. The system seemed overly complicated as if I would be pressing several buttons nearly all the time. And while yes, it's more involved than the game it's based on, once you get down to it, it all comes together pretty well. Not that we can show you as, at this point, the demo area was a no cameras, no capture zone. Now, no one really wants to be digging into menus as they fight enemies, but Final Fantasy VII Remake has tried to seek into them with a slick, bullet time-esque slowdown. This is called Tactical Mode, where you can access your spells and abilities. The latter seems to encompass character buffs, area of effect attacks, and stronger one-hit wonders. Now, to access Tactical Mode, you'll need to press X after filling up the active time battle gauges through standard attacks connected to the square button. Each character's weapon behaves differently. While Barrett's long-range gun can auto-attack if you hold the button down, Cloud's attacks are literally press by press, taking more time and keeping guard and evasion options available as you slash away. Protagonists can defend, but they can also evade by pressing circle, or simply steering the character out of harm's way. Barrett and Cloud aren't particularly agile, however. Hopefully, future characters might be a little more nimble. Speaking of your team, you can switch between them at any time and even bark special attack or magic commands through the collar buttons. For example, if you're controlling Cloud but Barrett's ready to cut loose, it's easy enough to do it without switching to the gun wielder. And when you do swap characters, the game does a very slick camera pan between the two of them. I'm not sure why this is important, but it just added to the general cinematic slick feel of this entire presentation. In Final Fantasy XV, perhaps the closest Final Fantasy game you can compare this to, while you leveled up your comrades and assigned them equipment and abilities, you never actually got to take control of them directly. This feels much better. And boy, it really is polished. Well, polished then covered in a layer of soot and grease. Cloud's iconic, anachronistic anime hair struggles to stay spiky at such a high resolution. But that's probably the only graphical letdown I can remember from playtime. Aliasing effect seems to persist across different parts of the game, adding a kind of hatching effect that's kind of growing on me. The characters are realistic, yes, but not hyper-realistic. There's some kind of artistic texture to everything. Now, after a few brawls against Shinra goons and a few security drones, Cloud and Barrett reach the depths of the reactor and get blindsided by the iconic Scorpion robot from the opening act of the original game. With a rear-mounted laser, a bunch of missiles, and the fact it is a giant robot, it was a great showcase as to how the entire battle system came together. Blocking is important. Don't burn through your gauges because you might need to heal sooner rather than later. Barrett is a better character for attacking a robot on the run, and Cloud is your heavy hitter. The boss battle was entertaining without being too punishing. And yes, I know it's a demo, but the earlier small fry battles were so easy, I still barely grasped the battle dynamics ahead of the main boss battle. Now, outside of battles, there wasn't exactly much to either do or report on. This was a demo seemingly focused on the battle mechanics. And I wonder how Square Enix is going to transform this game from the original that had so many moving parts and different characters into something this rich. It sounds like it's going to be a huge production. Now, I'm starting to believe that Square Enix can make this work, but can they keep up this momentum and make sure the entire game feels as bombastic and exciting as this tiny demo was? The company says the entire game will span two Blu-ray discs. That's a whole lot of game, and it's a whole lot of work ahead of the company. Hopefully, when we reach March 2020, it'll all come together.